Hi, I am happy to be here with you today to uh, share some scripture with you and to uh, encourage you and to um, hopefully we will be able to uh, hear what the Spirit is saying to us through the scripture that I'm going to share today. I'm going to share from uh, three different scriptures from 1 Peter chapter 1, from 1 Corinthians 13, and then I'm going to finish with uh, Psalms 23. So um, I hope and pray that every one of you are well that, uh, that hears this and uh, may God be with you and give you peace and comfort in the midst of the, the things that are going on in the world today. I pray for the folks at the rest home, Lord, as, uh, as they hear these words that uh, they will be comforted and they will have, uh, have that peace that passes all understanding that guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And uh, I pray for the staff there, and uh, and uh, this is uh, today is uh, October the fourth. It was uh, rainy yesterday morning. Um, we had actually had over an inch of rain, and this morning it rained a bit, and then it turned sunny and a beautiful day, uh, not real cold, so very pleasant day. And uh, this past week uh, we harvested everything else that's in our garden. Uh, we had a really bountiful garden this year and uh, I finished the crops by uh, taking the popcorn off. Um, we grew like seven rows of popcorn and uh, so my three grandchildren, uh, Madison and Cheyenne and Marshall, they helped me husk the corn and uh, now we have it uh, drying and so it'll probably take uh, two or three weeks to dry and then we will shell it. Uh, and uh, we try to give some away and and usually that's pretty easy to get popcorn away so uh, let's just uh, have a prayer as uh, we uh, hear the words uh, from the scripture so God is thank you for this day and I thank you God for family and for friends I thank you God for the folks at the rest home Lord for each one of them you know the the things that they need and God I pray in the name of Jesus that you will just touch them give, give them a peace and a comfort in the midst of whatever they're going through. God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for every day. And Lord, I pray that you will help us to recognize that life here on earth is, is short. Um, it seems like time goes by so quickly. And uh, so God, I pray that you will just uh, help each one of us to make the most of every opportunity to, to praise you, to worship you, to be kind and considerate to those around us. And Lord, I just thank you for this day. May you be with us. And you said that you'll always be with us. You'll never leave us or forsake us. And so we claim that promise in the name of Jesus. And it's your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. So like I said, I want to, uh, so I'm going to read uh, 1 Peter chapter 1. And then I'm going to switch over to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. This is what it says. This is from the Word of God reading from 1 Peter. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect exiles scattered throughout the provinces of Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit to, obedient, to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all of this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor 
when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that were to follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you when they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance, but, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all that you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Since you were called on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from the, your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead, and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have been purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of, a, of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, and the flower falls, but the Lord of the, the but the word of the Lord will endure forever. And First Corinthians thirteen says, Chapter one. And I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding kong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fameth all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, 
I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put away, put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection, as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now, these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. And I want to finish with Psalm 23, one that uh, I'm sure that many of you that are listening to this would have memorized this when you were younger, and maybe to this day you're still able to say it. So if you can say it with me, I'm going to uh, uh, say it by memory from the King James Version of the Bible. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What a great, beautiful psalm of God's being our shepherd, that he is always with us. He guides us. He, he leads us. Um, we're always safe. He, he leads us beside the still waters where it's easy to get a drink and not be frightened by the, the rapids of the water. He guides us in the paths where we should go. And even though we walk through, sometimes through dark valleys, he's there with us. He's with us and he is a light that shines brightly no matter whether it's day or night. That light shines and, and we don't need to fear any kind of evil that would come to us. And we are blessed that we can sit and have a feast. Even on earth we can, we can enjoy the food that we have here. But what an amazing thing it will be to have that, that feast in heaven. To be there with Jesus and all the people that have gone before us that we will know. I am so looking forward to that when, when Christ either comes back or he takes me home to be with him in heaven. And it says that we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As a human being, we can't comprehend what forever means. Our minds are finite and we can only understand a beginning and an end. Eternity is no end, no beginning and no end. And so we can't understand that, but we know that it will be wonderful to be in the presence of God. So I thank God for the readings of these scripture and I pray that it will speak to your heart and uh, maybe it has reminded you of something, whether um, the... First Corinthians 13, which talks about uh, love. There's faith and hope and love, but the greatest of these is love. And we know that we are called to, the scripture says that we are to love the Lord our God with all of our heart and our soul and our mind. And the second is like it, to love our neighbor as ourselves. And we know our neighbor is anyone that we come in contact with. That's our neighbor. And we are to love one another. Even if even if it's, even if they're um, are not easy to get along with, we're still to love, in spite of the things that uh, people say or do. Um, we are called to love one another. 
So I pray that these words will have, have meant something to you today. And uh, so looking forward to next week to, uh, to talk to you about uh, some different scriptures. Uh, I probably won't read the scripture next week, but um, I was talking to a few of you this week, and uh, you have indicated that, uh, uh, that you like to hear uh, scripture read. So I will do that once in a while. Not often, but once in a while I will do this. So I hope and pray that it has uh, spoke to your hearts today. So I'll just have a prayer and uh, then we'll just close with the Lord's Prayer. God, I thank you for this day. I thank you, God, that you love us dearly, that you call us by name, that you know us, that you have known us even before we were born. You know, you knew how long we are going to live. In Psalms 139, you say that all the days ordained to us were recorded before we breathed our first breath. And so I am so glad that you know you know each one of us by name. You, you have known us even before our life began. So God, thank you and praise you and we worship you. So be with these folks uh, that uh, listen to this, that you will just uh, be with them. May, may your spirit, God, may your Holy Spirit speak to the hearts of those that have listened to these words and and for myself too, Lord, may you just speak to me. May, may I have a clear understanding of your great love for me and for the folks that hear this. And for even if uh, for the folks that don't hear this, Lord, that uh, you will show your great love to those around here on earth. And Lord, we know we're in a difficult time in life and uh, there's, there's dissension, there's not, uh, there's not unity. And uh, so God, I pray that... Uh, in the name of Jesus, that you'll just be with us. Give us a, a peace that passes all understanding that you said that you will give us. And so God, is thank you for being with us. And we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And let's just close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May God bless each one of you, and may you be a blessing to those around you. See you later.